Never ride a roller coaster upside down. The ups, downs, and reinvention of an entrepreneur. You, Jeff Smolian, the founder, CEO, and chairman of the board of Ennis Corporation. And you're in beautiful downtown Indianapolis right now is what I'm assuming. Am I correct? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Sam. Okay. So you wrote this book just because you just listened to your daughter. She says, write a book. And then it was more driving her to school, telling her stories. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I, I, said I drove her from kindergarten until she fired me when she got her driver's license. But, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 she said, dad, you got to do this. And I started writing. And the next thing I knew I had a, an editor and an agent and a publisher, and it's just been a lot of fun. So what's the one um, story, maybe a couple stories that since the book has been out, people have been coming back saying, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe you put that in the book or, oh yes, that's been my favorite story to tell to my friends over the years. I'm so glad it's finally in print. So, so the yeah, world- there's, a, there's a few of them. There's one about Rick Cummings about uh, that I, I won't share now on the podcast, but uh, that a people, few people say, I can't believe you did that, that you make fun of yourself, but it was fun. But, uh, but there's just been a lot of crazy stories about baseball and starting sports radio and being nationalized in Hungary and uh, the craziness of the TV business and what happened to radio and just it's been a lot of fun yeah so it all started is this right but you were nine or ten listening to sports radio kind of as right. they just listening to the radio underneath the pillow listening to the sporting events is that when you first got your big passion for for radio it really was I um I, I and I, I have a daughter now the same daughter who's a freshman at Georgetown and she said, Dad, I'm not sure what I would do yet. I said, well, normal people aren't sure what they want to do at 18 with their lives. Uh, I always knew. I was listening uh, on transistor radios, which, you know, uh, you know, in my era, that's how you, that was the first portable device for radio. Uh, and would listen to ball games. I was a big Giants fan and, um, and also the top 40 radio and fell in love with it. When I went to college, I always knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. Let's three, the fine line between idiot and genius. Yes. Can you give an example? What do you mean by that? Well, I, I did two chapters in the book. I, I have a favorite saying, Sam. The line between being a genius and an idiot is very fine. And I've been on both sides many times. Um, so in one chapter was idiot to genius because I wanted to do all sports radio. And the rest of my team didn't. And they took pity on me. So they said, all right, it's a stupid idea, but we'll do it. And the first 18 months it was on the air, WFAN was the first all sports station. It was a disaster. Uh, they used to call it Smullyan's Folly. Uh, Jim Lampley, who was one of our first on air people, called it the Vietnam War of Emmis. Um, and then one day we bought the NBC stations. We merged it with 660, put Don Imus on. We put Francesa and Russo on. And the whole thing took off and it became one of the great iconic radio stations in America. So I became a genius on the same project. And uh, uh, and I would remind our people that I was now a genius because I'd been an idiot. And then we we bought the Seattle Mariners. And I when we bought them, we were sort of the turnaround kings. And I was this young guy, hard to believe I was ever young, but um, it, it was the new owner. And, uh, you know, I, I was kidded, uh, I, you know, the, the, you'd sign autographs and People take your pictures and do interviews all the time. Uh, and I was kind of the, the the boy wonder marketing genius who owned the Mariners. And then we didn't turn it around. And I became a pariah and I went from genius to idiot. So <laughs> like I said, you, you know, you're still I, the I same just, Jeff. You're the same person. Same me. Aren't yeah. Same? So that, and I've learned that's life. Um, I've been, that's why I named the book, Never Ride a Roller Coaster Upside Down. Uh, because life is really a roller coaster ride, and I did so many crazy things, and I did a lot of it upside down. So you've met uh, and worked with so many super talented entertainers, and yes. who maybe uh, not so much. So folks like Don Imus, Dave Letter, right. so on. Right. What is the common ingredient they have? What is the it factor that really just propels them? Just to well, just remarkable talent. Uh, David was was on the first station I ran. He was later on our board. He was kind enough to do a liner note for me on this book. Um, David was just brilliant. And, and I knew he was brilliant all the way along. Um, and, you know, I, I never forget one of the first, you know, months he was on the air. I went to lunch and he was on the air and I came back and a, a guy called and said, Letterman's a communist. And I said, well, why is he a communist? He said, well, I called and said, there's communists all over Carmel, Indiana. And he said, well, you got to give him Carmel. You know, the streets are bad and this, 
schools football teams lousy and you can never find a decent parking space. So let's give them Carmel and we'll hold the line at Nora, which is another suburb. And that was David. And one day, David, I'm sitting here looking at the, the Monument Circle. I'm on the, the downtown. And David came on one day and said the city sold the monument to Guam. And in exchange, we're getting a 350-foot celery stock. And people would say, you can't sell our monument. And David said, yeah, but the celery is going to make downtown a lot greener. So what the heck. But David was just brilliant. I mean, Don... You know, it, it just takes certain types that just have remarkable, you know, wit and intelligence. And uh, and I've been fortunate enough, blessed enough to be with a lot of them. So what are some tips you have for fellow entrepreneurs, not necessarily in media, but just in general? It seems like you well, know, I, I developed the saying that say, we're all entrepreneurs of our own lives. Uh, mm -hmm. I got kidded. I said, look, I'm an entrepreneur because I'm not hireable in a free society. Um, but, you know, I think. You know, you, you've got to find your passion in life. Find something you're good at. Find some. If you're good at something and you love something, you work harder at it. And there's no substitute for really working hard to, you know, and 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 when things are tough, you will, you know, you'll work harder, dig deeper um, if you love what you're doing. And, and and you hire a lot of folks. So I guess on the other hand, when people are maybe they're a recent college graduate, they're applying for jobs. What's something yeah. you would look for to candidate? Um, I mean, for any business. So I guess, what are your tips? I think, again, I think somebody, you know, I mean, Emmis is a unique culture. We, we are a very collaborative culture. We said Emmis is a place where an autocrat will die. Um, so people who are collaborative, who listen to other people. Um, and I think people, who, again, who we see have a spark to really, you know, care about what they do. And let's take it back again. Like, where are your parents? You write about the book, and grandparents from originally. How did they end up to... America and, and right, America. yeah. Well, my family, you know, my most of my family came from you know, uh, you know, the area where it's Belarus or Ukraine or parts of Russia. Uh, and the family came; they all settled in Indiana. I'm not sure why. I was a kid that my grandfather, my mother's father, uh, his family went from Philadelphia to San Francisco, and when the earthquake happened in '06, they ended up in Indiana. I'm not sure whether a wagon broke down or something. Um, and my dad's family was, you know, was, you know, from uh, uh, originally settled in eastern Pennsylvania and then ended up here. So they all ended up here and the family's been here most of uh, well over 100 years. And so this has been home. What advice do you have for young parents? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I've i joked, you know, the joke, I've had two teenage daughters and somebody said, what's the difference between, you know, dealing with a teenage girl and a terrorist? And the joke is, that you can sometimes reason with a terrorist, whereas a teenage girl, not so much. But I, I mean, you know, you got to let your your kids know you love them all the time. Uh, I was with my daughter in Washington the other night, and uh, we we're very, very close. I'm very, very close to all three of my kids. And I think the most important thing is let them know you love them. There were times uh, when they'd get very angry at whatever, you know, you whatever rules you were imposing. And I'm, I'm well known as a non-disciplinarian, but you know, and and I and I can still remember with my older kids and now my younger one, when they'd be very angry, and, and I'd say, "Let me ask you one question: Is there any doubt in your mind that you are loved deeply?" And they'd look at me, and they were so angry at me for whatever, and they go, "No, I know, I'm loved." <laughs> so I think that you know that's all you can do, and um, you know, I, I, my, my <laughs> I have to laugh at this story. I will tell you, I can't believe I'm telling you this. My, you know, I, I used to joke and say, you know, this parenting is not as easy as it looks and you're going to make mistakes. And my son, who was in college, had a dog and he was walking the dog and the dog was doing something, you know, difficult. And he turned to the dog and said, you know, raising you is not as easy as it looks. And he called me and I had to laugh, you know, but but it is, you know, you just give it your best shot. Everyone to pick it up. Never ride a roller coaster, upside down, the ups, downs, and reinvention of an entrepreneur, Jeff Spulian. Thank you so much for being on the Sam Alex Show. Really uh, appreciate it. Happy holidays. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Happy holidays.